Hey everybody, welcome to today's video and thanks for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, um, don't forget to subscribe if you like the content and don't forget to hit the like button uh, because that would really help with the YouTube algorithm. All right, so let's get started. We got smart bike trainers. We wound up getting a Wahoo kicker to replace the bike erg that we used to have. So in the past, as you guys know, we've been training using the bike erg. And uh, we decided that we needed to pretty much just up the ante with our training and we want to get a little bit better with, uh, we, we want to see more out of our performance on the bike. And especially when we just got bike fits and we really um, feel like we need to be more comfortable on our actual bikes. So that's why we ended up getting a bike trainer. Um, specifically the Wahoo Kicker. Why did we switch over to the Smart Trainer uh, from our Bike Erg? Uh, we've had the Bike Erg since last year and been riding indoors with it, been training indoors with it. We do our most of our workouts indoors and then our long rides outside. But since it's winter time and uh, unfortunately we cannot ride outdoors since we also had been getting lots of snow and ice and sleet and so it's a little bit more dangerous to be out there now than ever. The more time I've spent on the biker, the more I realize how it is pretty uncomfortable doing long rides on them. In fact, it's been sort of painful lately. Um, three hours was the max that I could do on it now because I would just get severe discomfort on my left hand, especially my, my pinky finger, uh, like a sort of numbness on there. And my wrist also, I would get some pains on my wrist and uh, on my toes as well. And so I was getting a serious discomfort from that. And I really wanted to um, just end it. I was sacrificing my power uh, just so that I could ride longer and which I don't want to do. So um, that was uh, the downside to, to having the biker. That's the first one. Um, and as you guys know, we did get a bike fit a couple weeks ago and we just want to, um, transfer what we learned from our bike fit into our actual bikes. And so that's why we decided to go with a trainer. Uh, and last but not least, it was really hard for us to, to get the cadence, um, higher than 75 on the bike erg without overshooting the power target. So we got the Wahoo kicker uh, because I read some good stuff about um, being erg, in erg mode. And so I know other smart trainers do the same thing um, out there, like the Saris and Attack X are a couple of examples that have erg mode on there. And uh, I read that it's actually a pretty good uh, feature to have when uh, you're doing intervals. And so pretty much the resistance or the software in the actual uh, machine itself uh, controls the resistance so that you're able to uh, work on either the cadence and also be able to to hit that target power. And so what's next uh, since we got this and it's going to be probably a while before we actually ride outside. Um, well, I got kind of a little stir crazy. And so what I did was I signed up to one of Zwift's uh, training plans, and that is the Build Me Up training plan on Zwift. And I started that this Sunday, and that was when I was doing the first workout. And I'm now in the first week, I'm in my first week of the training plan, and it's been working out. And so what I'm going to do is actually try to, if I can, just kind of record my experience on that. And hopefully if I get the chance, um, I'm hoping that I can actually edit the video properly and uh, put it out on, on time because there will be a Zwift training plan series and um, it will be in the build me up phase. I'm going to be on week one of uh, the Zwift build me up training plan, and I'm going to be doing the Devetaset. Devetaset, I think is how you say it. In that workout, I will be doing two by 10 minutes at sweet spot and recovery, and another 10 minutes at sweet spot, but changing the cadence. 
So legs still feel pretty good. Um, I actually had a rest day yesterday, so I'm, you know, it's only the first week, uh, but rest day yesterday was good because it kind of helped to um, ease the discomfort or the soreness from my legs the day before because I was doing pedaling drills and believe it or not, the pedaling drills, the single leg pedaling drills actually gave my, gave some soreness to my legs, especially when I, I, it helps with the mechanics of, um, of pedaling. So you can identify the dead spots while you're pedaling. And so that kind of was very revealing to me on what areas I need to work on and how to pedal more efficiently. Um, so I was pretty sore from that and yesterday I got the, the rest day and so uh, today I'll be doing the um, first workout of week one. So in this workout, um, what I did here, this is the first part of the workout where there are leg primers. And so these leg primers allow me to work on the cadence. And so the first part of that was 30 seconds at 185 watts at 100 RPMs. The second part was 105 RPMs. And this last part, um, it had me pedaling at 115 RPMs. So those were the leg primers. That was part of the warm up. And the first main set here, uh, we have 10 minutes at 90 RPMs. So this is my sweet spot um, power, target power at 175 watts. And what I like about being on erg mode is that I can just focus on my cadence and don't really have to worry about my, my power because um, it will keep me in that power regardless. Now I did notice though that my power wasn't really hitting 175 watts. It was slightly below that. Um, but however, during my recovery portion of the workout, I was kind of overshooting it. So I'm not sure if that is just something that I need to work on trying to get up to whatever target power it is, but it, I figured at that point, it really doesn't matter since I I'm within the range. So the second set here, uh, 175 watts at 80 RPM. So again, it's 10 minutes at sweet spot, uh, sweet spot target. And so again, I really like the erg mode. Um, I like the erg mode so that all I can do is really focus on my cadence. And that's always been a struggle of mine in the past is getting my cadence to 80 or above. So usually when I'm outside, my average cadence is 75 RPMs. And uh, I never actually thought that I would be able to even hit 100 RPMs on a ride. And so this has actually been a good kind of a wake up call that my legs can and are able to um, sustain that high cadence. So the last set, this is total of 10 minutes, but they broke it up into two minute and one minute intervals. So the first two minutes here, 90 RPMs, just kind of um, just spinning my legs. And I actually found that 90 RPMs is actually my ideal cadence now. That's actually my preferred cadence if, we're, if I am ever doing a ride like this. And then the next one minute interval, again, same, same target power, the cadence drops to 70 and it asked me to get off the saddle and stand up. And so that actually helped to sort of flush out anything, any byproducts that accumulated from the uh, high cadence. And it also kind of helped to alleviate some of the um, bum pains or butt pains that I get for sitting for so long. And so these two efforts, the hard effort, I would could call it the 90 RPMs and the recovery quote effort is 70 RPMs. Today I am going to be doing another workout. So yesterday I just, I finished the Deved set uh, workout. Um, and now today I'm going to be doing something called the Red Unicorn. And the Red Unicorn has a series of uh, intervals with at a low sub threshold 
for I believe two or three minutes and then 30 seconds at threshold and then back down to low sub threshold, 30 seconds at threshold. So I do that six times and then there's a rest in between and then do it another six times and then a rest in between. The interesting thing I notice about Zwift is that the, um, the intervals change cadence as well. And so each interval, it could be the same power. However, the cadence changes. So um, what I learned, and I'm not sure if this is to be true, but what I learned is that the lower cadence works your muscular system, whereas the higher cadence works your aerobic system. But one takeaway that I got from doing the workout that I did, uh, the Devedeset workout that I did yesterday is that I'm able to hold 100 RPMs for four minutes. And I have never been able to do that in the past. I've always hovered <clears throat> no more than 85 RPMs on the biker. And since we got the uh, Wahoo Kicker, the smart trainers, it's been a lot easier to get that high cadence. And so um, stay tuned and I will show you guys the workout. got done with the workout. Um, I probably hit my highest 90 minute average power of 143 watts. That was surprising to me because I think that is the highest that I've ever gotten uh, for that length of time. Uh, the workout was fun. Um, I like that there was a 
switch between different cadences. So it could either be low cadence or high cadence or getting off the saddle or staying seated on the saddle. Um, so that kept the, the workout interesting at the same time, helped conserve the energy so that I can actually finish the workout. Problem was that I had another power dropout and this happened, uh, this is probably the second time or third time that's happened to me where either in the middle or towards the end of my workout, the Wahoo would disconnect from my computer. And I'm not sure why that's happening. And from when I researched it, I read that it could be that some other Bluetooth devices are interfering with the signal, the Bluetooth signal. And so it could be my headphones uh, that I am using to listen to music. So um, I'm gonna have to make sure that this doesn't happen again, especially, um, luckily that happened towards the end of the workout. It was the, I had like eight seconds left of the last interval before a cool down. So that didn't really matter. Um, but yeah, got the workout done and I'm glad that I was able to put out the power and tomorrow it'll just be a low zone two ride. So I just got done with my low zone two ride, which was um, good because I really, I felt like I really needed it. I just wanna monitor my overall, um, just how I feel um, after the workouts and just how, just kind of listen to my body and see how my body feels with that. And uh, logging, continue to log my sleep and um, also, my overall feeling after the workout and the next day, if I feel sick, I actually have a little bit of a runny nose going on right now. Um, I don't know if that's anything to be alarmed with, but um, I do have that. Um, otherwise, yeah, uh, low zone two today and that felt pretty good and I felt like I still had enough power, but I don't want to push it too much. So I just did an hour and a half. Um, typically on Sundays, as you guys know, uh, if we were to ride outside, we'd be doing a longer ride, but um, just want to make sure that I don't want to um, draw, I don't want to accumulate too, ma too much fatigue into this plan, especially if it's only the first week. Um, so yeah, so I'm just keeping tabs of my form on Training Peaks. And also, if you wanted to see what the workouts are like, I do have my Strava account if you wanted to check that out to see whether or not I met my target. Um, but that would be pretty interesting just to, as we move on to this, to this plan. Anyways, guys, um, sorry, this, the videos have been kind of a little, kind of a mishmash of different things. And I really didn't know how to do this video because I'm not familiar with this structure that I'm doing now, since I'm mostly doing my rides indoors. Hopefully that you you like this kind of format until we get to ride outdoors again. Anyways, see you guys again next week or so. I'm not sure if it's gonna be next week, sorry. Um, but yeah, don't forget to enjoy your ride. Bye-bye.